The government ship seems to be springing an awful lot of leaks lately. <coughs> yeah. I see what you did there. The most recent one of these leaks goes by the name of Snowden, and I'm sure a lot of you have been following or at least have heard of this particular case where a more or less a defense contractor agent revealed a whole lot of secretive stuff before, well, becoming an enemy of the state. And it's become this big deal now because of a lot of what he has revealed and what it says about us. And I think... While people are really getting wrapped up in what Snowden has done, and is he a hero, is he a villain, whatever, I think more of us should be taking the time to look at what he has revealed and think about why he might have done it. Because if we actually go into this stuff, well, Germany's pissed, for one, because, well, a lot of our monitoring happened on their soil, basically without their permission and everything. And, well, a lot of people got monitored by the PRISM deal and a lot of people are quite upset by it as they should be and you know we have people running around saying well he shouldn't have said anything about it and blah 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 and you know take that as you will whether or not you think he should have or shouldn't have said it the way he did or whatever it's not important the point is if you don't want to get exposed for doing something that's going to piss everybody off you probably shouldn't be doing it i mean Yes, he might have caused us quite a bit of problems by revealing what he did when he did, and sure, that sucks for our military. You know what, though? You can't really bitch at the person who caught you stealing from the cookie jar because you're the person who was stealing from the fucking cookie jar. Like, it's not the person's fault who reveals your crime that you committed a crime. And in this case, I think we see what I consider to be pretty good government overreach in national security, where they have this idea that the only way to be safe from attacks is to monitor everything, everywhere. And not only is that not even feasible, but it thrashes apart the meaningful ideas behind our Constitution that protects us from government overreach. And beyond that, it pretty much destroys any meaningful idea of privacy and separation of the government from your personal life. That pretty much is gone. And I think that should chill everybody who thinks about it. That the government basically has a desire to know everything that's being said between people. Yeah, sure, it's for our protection per se, but, you know, not to get all conspiracy theory sounding here, but the government is made up of people. It's not like a monolithic entity bound by morals and honors, or even accountable to the people who comprise it. The left hand does not have to know what the right is doing here, and all it takes is one pissed off guy at, with access to lots of data to do irreparable harm to somebody, anybody, a group, a person, whatever, by releasing very sordid, potentially, details of their lives. You know, like Snowden released a whole bunch of embarrassing and potentially dangerous government information. What's to stop somebody else from, you know, maybe a bone to pick with somebody they dislike, pulling up their data, and, hey, look, this guy has a fetish for X and Y, and here's his records and transcripts, and this information, once collected on this level, becomes subject to such easy abuse that I don't really know if we could trust anybody with that kind of a full access to our lives. Anyone. I don't care who it is. I don't think we should trust people with that much access. This is an example, a good one, of technology outstripping our humanity and our understanding of one another. Where, due to the fact that we have the power to do something, we're just doing it. Yes, we can monitor everybody. We have the technology now, so we're just going to do it. But this leaves behind fundamental questions about human nature, if you will. What kind of expectations do we have of privacy, of self-determination? What are we as a people willing to give up in the name of security? These are fundamental questions that we all really need to be asking ourselves because, well, technology has made them pertinent now in a way that they never have been before. And it's only going to progress from here. PRISM is one step in a direction that could write our future very well. And I don't think we want to head that direction, the ones predicted 
by 1984 and Brave New World, where the government is omnipresent, where the government is watching you. <laughs> Big Brother, right? I mean, it's already sort of a running joke, especially with Britain, with their cameras. However, that's not the scary part. Oh, they have cameras. I almost wish we went that direction instead of where we have gone, which is the monitoring of the lifeblood of communication of today, the internet. <laughs> That's where they're monitoring because they're smart. That's where people do a lot of their interaction now. and They have their hand on the pulse of our communication, and I don't know if we should be comfortable with that. And, you know, as a point to consider, everybody's connected by cell phone nowadays. Most people couldn't even think of going without a cell phone, and they talk and text all the time, but that's now accessible, all of it. And it's not just what you say in your calls, it's what you text, it's the data you look at, everything. They want a picture of everything you're doing on the internet, and I hear people going on already with the whole, well, if you have nothing to hide bullshit, and it's like, well, no, I don't have anything to hide. And just like I pointed out in the government fear video, it doesn't matter if we have anything to hide or not. What matters is a crime, right? It's not about thought crime here. It's about crime crime. It's about what you have done. It's about what you actually intend to do. Now, let's say somebody's a threat. Yes, they should be watched if they're already a threat. And you can ask, well, how are we supposed to know beforehand? Well you don't always know beforehand and you can't expect to know beforehand and like if we compare terrorism to other crime which is what it should be treated as is, is it, it's a crime we don't see massive efforts to surveil people to discover murder to find i mean drug dealing's got pretty absurd the methods they use to try to get that but it hasn't reached this level no, this is reserved for terrorism, one of the least common of crimes to occur in our society. Receives more money than the fucking drug war, which is a boondoggle enough as it is, and drug dealing's much more common than terrorism. So, I, my mind is blown, not just by the level of invasion of privacy that goes on here, not just by the sheer arrogance, if you will, of the government to assume that they to just have this access, but by the amount of resources and money blown on this threat, which is so small compared to the effort put into preventing it. That, that particularly befuddles me. I understand that terrorism sucks. Don't get me wrong, and that's an understatement of a huge amount. Terrorism is a horrible, awful thing, and it's a terrible crime. But just like any murder, just like any act of vandalism or arson or destruction of any kind, terrorism is a crime, and it's something that should be handled by our legal system. Just like it's nonsensical to have a war on drugs, a war on poverty, a war on it, it's not a country. It's not a single unified group or thing. Terrorism is a concept. Terrorism is a concept that won't go away anytime soon, and you will not ever successfully make war on a concept. End of discussion. It's an idea and ideas do not die. We sort of have set up ourselves to fall into a wonderful 1984 situation where we have an unlimited, unending, faceless enemy that we can have a forever war against. We'll never not be at war with terrorism. We'll never not have some group of belligerents wanting to destroy us. It's, it's never gonna happen. The war on terror as a self-perpetuating thing, has become far more than just the war in Afghanistan and the war in Iraq. We have drones operating in Pakistan, Afghanistan, like other regions. We have operations going on in Africa, in the Middle East. It's turned into a world war in a sort of weird, non-war way, where we have drones and special agents operating in all different fields, and we're always vigilant now, and the war is basically a reactionary war, where we're at war with a force that we just sit around and wait for them to come whenever they feel like it. And as we fight this war, as it continues on, what we end up doing is, because terrorism is a faceless foe in a sense, where it's not a nation, it's not a people, it's not anything like that, we have to attack, well, real targets. We can't fight a war of concepts, so we attack a nation where there are terrorists. We kill some terrorists. We also kill innocent people. Innocent people, especially in the poor areas who have been hit with our 
devastation, then come up hating America, joining the next generation of terrorists as they're brainwashed and their hatred is cultivated by people who are well trained at it. And in essence, we fill this war with the next generation of soldiers to fight us in our efforts to destroy them. Again, a perpetual never-ending war where the actions we take enrage a group of people who suffer the collateral damage of war, who come against us as new generations of terrorists, we strike at them, further enraging more innocents who are caught up in the crossfire, and it goes on and on and on and on. It's just a self-fulfilling prophecy of war, where not only do we become transformed as we stare into the abyss, it stares back, we become like our foes more and more, but they become more and more hardened against us at the same time. So, to wrap all of this back up where I began with Snowden, we have a case here where America has been caught with its hand in the cookie jar, more or less, and our reputation takes quite a hit because of this. We are less trustworthy in an international scene. And this all goes through the war I've talked about. It goes through everything else because... This sort of thing, when it comes out, breeds more distrust and more resentment. It fuels the terror attacks. It fuels the anger other people feel towards us. And really, the only way we're going to win any kind of war on terrorism, if you want to call it that even, is hearts and minds. You're not going to actually win this thing until a majority of people in these places can actually be convinced that we aren't the great evil. So we have to start taking actions that make us look less evil. I mean, it's not too much of a leap, I think. If we stop pointless campaigns, you can argue what you will about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, but to a lot of people, there's been a lot of bloodshed, and they don't see the reason. Maybe it was just. Maybe it was right. But to the people who watched their apartment building get destroyed and friends and relatives die, well, they don't see the point, I assure you. And that's what matters here is perspective. The Snowden case is just one more example of why other people in other nations can have a pretty bad perspective of us. And if we want to change perspective, if we want to win hearts and minds and convince people that we are not evil and really take the legs out from terrorism, we're going to have to act superior. We're going to have to act not, not arrogantly superior, but morally superior. We'll have to be excellent as people. We'll have to be something that others can look to and say, hey, you know, that America, yeah, that's an awesome place that actually is a land of opportunity. It's not a place of oppression, and it's not a place that's so afraid of its own citizens that it can't trust them with anything. As long as we have this image of America, the fortified nation against all threats, including its own people, it's going to look an awful lot like that stormy castle off on the hill that every horror movie starts with. <laughs> Just something to think about.